Yes, sir. We are back with another edition of Fast Break Bets presented by Betting Pros. And okay, the weekend was a wash. Kind of, are my glasses crooked? These are totally crooked right now, bro. Is it the is it the headphones? No, these are. I just went to Lens Crafters and got my glasses fixed, and they're already crooked. I need. I just need to go order some contacts. Sorry, guys. <laughs> As you can see, <laughs> I get very distracted very, very easily. Back to what I was talking about. It was kind of a wash over the course of the weekend in the Discord channel for the the plays. Hey, by the way, if you're not in that Discord channel, go ahead and take the time to make sure you get into that Discord channel. BettingPros.com/chat. I we do not have shows on the weekends, so Fast Break Bets does not record on the weekends. However, I do drop plays into that Discord channel, so you can go over there and you can tell me, you can fade me, and whatever plays I dropped in the hashtag Fast Break Bets Picks channel, I definitely drop plays in there. But I dropped six plays. Was it six? I believe it was six over the course of the weekend. And, you know, we had a pretty. Pretty, pretty all right, up and down time. Started off with the Mystics first half, and I played a Brittany Sykes over on 12 and a half points. Those did not cash as the Mystics lost that first half by six. That game really wasn't even close, not even a shot. However, I did end up playing the over 160 and a half in the sky and the Sparks game that cashed. So then we rolled over into Sunday, kicked it off with the Dream versus the Sun, played that first half under it between those two teams, and that ended up going under. So that cashed. Jewel Lloyd cashed over 21 and a half. Like everybody knew she would. Like, come on now. You guys knew she would cash that. So Jewel Lloyd cashed, and then uh the Sparks team total over did not hit against the aces they scored 71 i had them over 77 and a half so two and one on sunday one and two on saturday for a three and three over the course of the weekend and i just man that heater is coming like it just feels like since it's we've come back i've only had even days like it feels like i've been even in the picks maybe a little bit down but i'm looking to turn that around and again to make sure you don't miss out on plays like that in the weekend because we are going on a heater on the weekend. I'm calling it. Make sure you tap into that Betting Pros Discord. Hop into the Fast Break Bets channel and you will see all of the picks. I hashtag I at everybody in the picks channel. So make sure you get into that picks channel for all of that. All right. It's a new week. We have Tuesday games, three games going off in the W. I have three plays for you. And play number one. Okay. So as of time of recording the night before, I have not bought in a train ticket to go to this game. However, I do have a pass to go to the Liberty and Wings game. There's a probably good, I'm probably going to make not the best financial decision. And I'm just going to end up going to the game. So. This is really, really frustrating, and I would, I would love uh, to be released from the shackles of betting the Dallas Wings. Like, oh my gosh, I just, I would love to just stop betting Dallas. But guys, they're fourteen and a half point dogs against the Liberty. Like, it's really, really hard. It's really, really hard not to be tempted by that. And so let me give you a little history on why this is very tempting. So I already talked about it last time. The Liberty haven't been this good. Laying the big number, uh, 2 and 11, they are this season when they're laying this big of a number. And they just got their other win against the Sparks the other day. The Wings are actually 1 and 3 as a dog is plus 10. So that's actually not as good. However, the Wings are getting reinforcements. Not only did they get Satu Sabali back, and we saw she had a really good game against that Sun game, even though it was out of the realm possibility for them to win. They're getting Maddie Segris back as well. If I don't know if you remember Maddie Segris uh, when she played in Villanova, but very, very good player when she played at Villanova. She's been playing really, really good to start the season, and then she fractured her finger, I believe it was, and she was out for a while. It might have been the whole hand, actually. But she was out for a while after that. And... 
Uh, I really, 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 really want to be released from the shackles of betting Dallas, but they're fully healthy. They're playing a wings team that they have familiarity with in the fact that they play this team tough. Look at the last three matchups between these teams. Last season, 94-93, Liberty got a one-point win on the road. Uh, Dallas, 98-88, the Liberty got uh, lost by 10 in that game. They were actually seven-and-a-half-point dogs, Dallas was, on the road. And they got a win, 98-88, in Brooklyn the last time they played in Brooklyn. And then the time before that that they played in Brooklyn, they lost 102-93, they did not end up covering that line. Uh, that line was an eight and a half line. They lost by nine, but they were able to go out there and get that win. So what do you? What's the thing that sounds familiar? It's always a bunch of points, and Dallas has relatively been in the game. Like they've they've been there. They've covered this line in the last three games against this team. They play this team tough. I I'm really going back and forth between do I want to just take the points or do I want to take the Wings team total over? Because that Wings team total was at 79 and a half. And 80 points, again, for a Dallas team that scored 90 in the past three three matchups against this team. Nothing offensively is wrong with Dallas. Like, I don't think anything offensively is wrong with Dallas. It's just the fact that they couldn't get a stop to save their life. And so with that, I don't think I'm actually going to play this spread. I think we're going to just take the team total. As much as I, mm, the Liberty have been really, really good defensively, but I just believe in Dallas. I believe in Dallas. I think at the very least, Dallas is going to be able to score. And they're going to be able to find ways. Now that they're, again, a full offense, you have Jalen Brown back. You have Satu Sabali back. You have Maddie Seegers back. In addition to Natasha Howard, who's having a revenge game here in Dallas, Arike Agumawale, who now doesn't have Benajia Laney Hamilton guarding her, so she should really open things up. Like, the, the, the urgency for Dallas is there. The urgency is there. Just put the ball in the basket. The, both of these two teams are over teams. Dallas 18 and 8 to the over over the course of the season. Liberty 15 and 13, 9 and 4 is a home favorite. Like, put the ball in the basket. That's all I need. Going with the Dallas Wings. Team total over 79 and a half. I do like the 14 and a half on the spread, though. I really do. I've gone back and forth about which one I need to play. So that's my play. Dallas team total over 79 and a half. That's play number one. Play number two, let's go ahead and go to the Seattle Storm and Washington Mystics game. Oh, man, my Seattle Storm. They just got their butt kicked in the second half of both of these two games. They Both of those two games were winnable games, and they really, really just kind of crapped it away. So this is how I'm playing this game. Because I do think that the Seattle Storm are in are due for a bounce back spot. I think they're very much due for a bounce back spot in the terms that they're probably going to try to come in here into on a Tuesday. Actually, the Mystics probably are going to have a nice little crowd. They're giving out Mystic Rebel hats. I got the notification because, you know, I be going to the Mystics game. So I got the notification and it told me that they are giving out hats and so it's probably going to be a little bit of crowd i'm expecting an atmosphere but i just think that the seattle storm team offensively and defensively just have too much for us for a mystics team that i just don't think competition wise is at that level to be able to compete for four quarters and so i think that the seattle storm are going to have a better offensive day i think they're going to be able to score however i don't want to take the storm i don't want to take them on a the spread i well, I do like them on the spread, but that's not the play I'm giving out here. I'm going to get about a player prop. And if I think that Storm offense is going to thrive, I'm going to back a player who is leading the offense and has the ball in their hand at almost all given times, and that's Skylar Diggins-Smith. Her points and assist prop is at 20 and a half, minus 115. You look at what she's done in two meetings against this, against this Washington Mystics team earlier this season. She's had... 
18 and 5 in one game for 23 points and assists, and 16 and 9 in another game for 25 points and assists. I still think that they are going to have issues trying to guard all of the players. I think Neka Magumake is going to have a really good game. I do like her points prop as well. I think that Jewel Lloyd can have a good game. And I think Skylar Dingus Smith, who had 20 points and assists in that game against Indiana last game, that was a, a horrible efficiency day for her, for her, and she still had 20. The game before that, she had 29 points and five assists against Atlanta. Like It seems like she's kind of gotten into a rhythm of what she means for this team offensively. I think the assist tally is going to come up. I think the points are still going to be fairly consistent for her. I think the Skylar Diggins Smith can get over this, and so if I think that the Storm are going to have a good offensive day, Skylar Diggins Smith is normally at the helm of a lot of those really, really good offensive days for the Seattle Storm. She's been over this prop in 59% of her games this season, 60% of the last 20 games she's been over, uh, and again, 100% 2 of 2 in the two games against the Washington Mystics. I think she gets it done one more time. I'm going with Skylar Diggins-Smith. Over 20 and a half points and assists. I do think this is a good day for the Seattle Storm. So that's play number two. Play number three. We're going to the Connecticut Sun and the Law. La- Los Angeles Sparks. This is a quote unquote home game for the Connecticut Sun. This is the first game in TD Garden, the first WNBA game in TD Garden, and they sold it out. This game is going to be electric. It's going to be fun. And I'm going to back the first half under for these two teams. First half under 78 and a half in this game. So there's a bunch of different layers of why I like the under here. The first layer is the fact that they are playing in TD Garden, the Boston Celtics, you know, arena. And that whole area is Suntown. Like everybody's a Sun fan. So this is like one of those SEC neutral site games where they take Georgia, put Georgia in a game in Atlanta and say it's a neutral site game and it's really not. No, this is going to be a pro Sun crowd, 100%. However, this is still a two-hour bus ride from Mohegan Sun all the way to get to TD Garden. So you're not getting your regular routine when you're going into this game. You have the hype behind the game. We've been talking about it for a while. It's been sold out for a while. Like I think all of that just plays an additional factor that I think should be in consideration. Here's another factor. Kurt Miller is the the former longtime coach of the Connecticut Sun. They ain't never play in TD Garden before <laughs> while Kurt Miller was in his tenure. I I do believe in revenge games. I think that as we start to you continue to listen to me, some for some reason you guys like me rambling in your ear, and I appreciate it. I really do. I'm not complaining. But as you get to learn me a little bit more, you know that I love a good narrative when betting. If I have a good narrative, I will 100% bet it. And so the Kurt Miller revenge game is also in there. And Kurt Miller, also a defensive coach, I think that he's trying to get this Sparks team to kind of lock in on the defensive side of the ball. And if anybody knows this Sun team, it's Kurt Miller. Like, I think he knows the best ways to defend this team, how to guard this team. This team, this game went under when they played earlier in the season. It was a 79 70 final in that one I think it's going to be a little bit of the same and so in the first half you look at the Connecticut Sun this season they are 8 and 18 in the first half to the under well over so 8 and 18 over under you guys get what I'm saying whatever 8 and 18 to that first half number 3 and 8 as a home favorite I think this is another good spot where I can see multiple ways. Hey, maybe the Sparks are completely outclassed in this one. Like maybe they're completely outclassed and they don't score anything and this Sun defense locks down as we know they can. Then I still think the first half goes under. Or maybe the Sparks keep this close, play really good defense. It shows that Kurt Miller really does understand this team and the best ways to guard this team. And so it still goes under. Either way, I really, really hope this ends up with it being under, but I I like it. I think that that playing in TD Garden, a new, bigger arena, like I'm going to lean a little bit more to the first half unders. So give me a first half under 78 and a half for this Connecticut Sun and Los Angeles Sparks game. And those are the three plays. First play up is going to be, like I said, that under 78 and a half Los Angeles Sparks and Connecticut Sun game. 
I also have Skylar Diggins Smith over 20 and a half points and assists. And then I'm rolling with the Dallas Wings one more time. I took their team total over 79 and a half. I really hope this is a 3 and 0 day for us. All right, make sure you are tapped into us on YouTube. And so you can catch this. You can catch this on YouTube. You can catch it wherever you get your podcast, youtube.com slash betting pros. You can catch me on Instagram, maybe in a short or an Instagram reel or something like that at betting pros NFL. And then we're on Twitter and TikTok at betting pros. So hoping for a three and O day, hope that we can take this week and we can parlay this into a, a nice stretch of wins. Like I want to have a really, really good week here because last week it just kind of felt like a wash in the first couple of days back. It felt like a wash. I'm ready to get back to it. So with that, I actually have nothing else to say, nothing else to do. No other way of ending the podcast. Just going to end like this. We are out of here.